Welcome in to the next episode of the Young Entrepreneurs Network podcast. Today we have Daniel Luby, which I've been fucking buzzing about, man. Um, I've been working with Daniel for the last month and a half or yeah, so. Yeah. Um, and we've been helping him, you know, scale Activo, which we're going to be unraveling today because I think it's something that's a, one, a story that's fucking incredible, but two, the business model is something that I know a lot of people will see, but they probably won't understand either whether like the even like the profitability of it, yep. how you started it, maybe they want to start one themselves. We'll unravel all of that today, mate. Um, but firstly, thank you for coming on, brother. Nah, it's a pleasure. I'm absolutely buzzing to be here. It's um, going to be class. I've been looking forward to jumping on and getting a chat with you for ages. So, I um, it's got to be fun. Hundred percent, mate. So obviously, starting out with Activo in the first place, you yep. know what? What was the kind of motivation? What was the excitement behind doing something like this? Was it something that started as a side hustle? Like, yeah. So I mean, it kind of started sort of like December of last year. So we're pretty much coming on like twelve months now. Um, where you know, I was in a job, full time job. It was pretty good, good salary, but there was just no like job satisfaction from what I was doing. It was kind of like you were getting up, going to work going home and then rinse and repeat and I was like do you know that feeling where you're always like destined for something better than what yeah. you were doing I had this urge in me where I was like I need to be doing something better than this um yeah. so one day what I decided to do because it was that stage where I was like I, I've got no idea what I want to do but yeah. I know I've got so much to offer so one day I just sat down I got a piece of paper and a pen and I just wrote down everything I loved Right. And then I just started to come up with ideas based on all of those things. How can I actually create money from those different ideas of that? And obviously one of the things I love is I love fashion, especially more active work. Cause that's, that's, that's what I wear. I'm passionate about the brands, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so then as I was jotting down ideas, I kind of started to dive a little bit deeper and doing a little bit of R&D and, you know, how can I actually make money out of doing this sort of stuff? And that's kind of where I stumbled upon a few networks and stuff. Yeah. Um, where you can kind of get involved into how to get into supply chains, how to actually build a platform in terms of social media, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then it just evolved from there, you know. Um, I didn't always start going down the route of active wear. It was kind of more that personal shoppy vibe where yeah. I kind of wanted that one-to-one -one connection with a, with a client and actually mm -hmm. just sourcing them what they wanted at the time. But it later on developed into building a, a brand as a retailer and then kind of moving into the space of active wear. Yep. Um, so that's that's kind of in a nutshell where it kind of stemmed from. So the personal shopping stuff, like what, um, how did it evolve into more of a brand? Like the, I guess the step-by-step -step of that, because it's, it's an interesting I, 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 I mean, for me, it started off with like viewing it as the longevity of it, right? Yeah. So when you're doing that personal shopping stuff, it's great because you build these one-to-one -one connections with people. Um, and you know, and you, you get to source some really cool stuff that they're asking for, yeah. and it's fun to be able to go and go away and try and find that stuff at a really great price for people. Mm. But in in terms of scalability, you're going to reach a ceiling at some point of how much you can actually do. Yeah. Because I've only got twenty four hours in a day, and there's only so many clients I can deal with on a day to day mm. basis before before it you need to then scale it beyond that and actually become a retailer. Yeah. Um. So I understood that very quickly, but the, the personal shopping part was a bit of a means to an end to build up a bit of a platform and a bit of a cash flow to be able to then mm. reinvest that back into building a business. Yeah. Um. So that was kind of, it was just pretty much a means to an end at the start. I understood that very quickly. Yeah. Because um, I think the personal shopper stuff I've seen like, I think I've seen a post from like Haaland or something like that when he had a personal shopper. Yeah. And it was like 300, 400 bags at a time. Yeah. This per that you would go to this personal shopper and be like, yeah. I'm going to Germany. I need this sort of stuff there, <laughs> but I've also got 10 friends. Yeah. And when you see stuff like that, you think like, Yeah. And I, I mean, when you, when as a personal shopper, you get those high end clients, it's very demanding, right? I yeah. mean, when you've got Haaland belling you on the phone, they're like, <laughs> I need 400 LV bags. I'm going away for two months. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that, those are the type of clients you want. But to scale to get to those type of clients, you yeah. do have to build a brand and you have to get these sort of connections with people to be able to get yep. into those 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 kinds of people so um but that was never really the aim anyway the yep. aim was to you know build a national wide brand yep. and beyond so that that's kind of where it evolved into yeah makes a lot of sense man and in, in terms of i guess like the decision making of like how it evolved i guess like going from doing the personal shopper stuff into building a brand what was the i guess the decisions you had this change like what was the different things that you had to do to go from personal shopping to activo 
Well, the, the first thing that I did was I had to rebrand the entire business yeah. because my initial business model was based around me. Yeah. The whole business name was based around me because it was that personal shopper thing. I want people to come and shop with me. Yeah. So the biggest decision I had to make was rebranding the entire business, mm. which is kind of how we came up with the name Activo Sports yeah. because I did decide that it was, it was the active wear route I wanted to go down instead of you know going down the high end route or the street wear route or all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so the rebrand was probably one of the most important things for the business as to how do we land that correctly and get the brand right for the consumer so it makes yeah. sense um so yeah it, it was a little bit of a risk to rebrand because yeah. i'd kind of built that platform with the original social media pages and stuff and to mm. kind of rebrand it completely it can be quite confusing yeah um but it's probably the best decision i ever made was rebranding it to yeah. an actual retailer brand now it's something you can see on storefronts and you know it's 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 got it's got that credibility now as such yeah. as, a, as a retailer now yeah which makes a lot of sense mate and i think like i always find it super interesting how a brand can evolve into something else but still maintain like a level of support and people buying absolutely and, like, stuff like that which i thought was class and i think i noticed when i think it was when i shared yourself on early like, our story when yeah. you joined young and lazy i see i kept getting like when i was tagging activo it had a different image yeah and it was like plug plug in yeah, something yeah, plug yeah, in yeah. something i think yeah. that's older brand, so that, yeah. that was the older stuff yeah right. okay. um, um so like i said it, it was called dl the plug so obviously okay. daniel louis so that yeah. that was kind of the the, the, yeah. the brand name but that doesn't make sense as a retailer mm -hmm. you know what i mean because yeah. realistically the brand has to have no attachment to me yeah the, the brand needs to be a standalone thing where people know that do you know yeah, what i mean for so, sure man i guess like the, the big thing for me when i was probably researching on activo and looking at even like your website and stuff like that and speaking to you about it i knew i knew a couple of guys that had started maybe something similar at times but it fizzled out and most of the time why, why it fizzled out was because they the profit margins were, yeah. were shit or they weren't getting enough of i guess good stuff like good quality stuff that people couldn't just get elsewhere yeah they had to come you know through a certain kind of supplier like this um and I guess, like, from looking at your stuff, it's very clear premium pricing. Yep. But also, like, super cool fucking shit that yep. I've not really seen yep. anywhere else. Just, do you want to kind of break down, I guess, how you made that possible? So, I, I mean, it's, it's a fairly simple blueprint. And it's just a case of connecting and networking with the right people. And actually, mm. you know, when when you are buying and selling stock, you always want to be making sure that you're, you're connecting with people um, and actually building that relationship with them so that you can always take a little bit of nugget of information from people as to you know where some people might be getting stuff or who might be the guy that's getting the stuff that you can actually then lean on and go i can do something for you if you can do something for me mm. right so it's, it's kind of that that two-way street type thing yeah. and then naturally it kind of evolves from there where you start to network with these people that do get kind of the more exclusive stuff that get kind of the the high that sort of higher ticketed stuff sportswear yeah. stuff as such if you know what i mean yeah. the stuff that's in real really high demand but in low mm. supply mm. um and then from there you become really self-sufficient and you you learn a lot of stuff from these yeah. people where you can actually be able to do it yourself as well and get it from from places that people don't even wouldn't even consider that you're getting it from yeah um sure. but i mean in reality a lot of the a lot of the higher end sort of exclusive stuff doesn't come from the uk it comes from overseas yeah and it's one thing I really fucking hate, but Nike, right? <laughs> Nike's design team need to need to really like go back to their old roots of some of the designs they were doing because mm. all the cool, cool stuff that f people love is from like 2014, 2015, 2016. Mm. Um, I just wish we could get some of that cool, that new new gen sort of like yeah. cooler stuff. Do you know what I mean? All these mad patterns and all that and yeah. bright colors. So hopefully in future Nike can you know give us some really cool stuff again. Yeah, it for would, sure. Man. Um, but. Yeah, that, that's pretty much the the way that we've done it is, you know, we just need to network with the right people and get in with the right supply chains and actually extract as much information from people as possible, but also provide them with information as well because it needs to be at that two-way street. Yeah, what would be your kind of advice to those wanting to build relationships, even like, not necessarily with suppliers, but like with in general within business because it seems, bro, like, December last year yeah. and like where you're at just now yeah. numbers wise, which I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about at some point, you've yeah. built that very fast, mate. So what would be your advice around building relationships like that maintain authenticity mm. i i am unapologetically me all the time yeah and i'm kind of one of those people where you 
you will really love me or you will really hate me, right? And yeah. it, there's there's no kind of in between. But if you can maintain that authenticity, which I hope comes through from the branding as well of the business, yeah. um, that you know, if you're authentic with people, they can feel that and yeah. they actually will gravitate towards towards you if yeah. you know they want to help you out because you are like a real yeah. person. Do you know what I mean? Maintaining that that authenticity does go such a long way, especially in business. You know, because yeah. there's a lot of people out there that could be, you know. But acting as a persona that, yeah. that they're not um for sure so yeah that's what i attribute, attribute that, it to in terms of like core values and obviously authenticity would be one of them is there any other kind of core values that you feel like are just super important for you within business honesty 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 has yeah. to be up there yeah um the, the thing is when you're doing sort of like big monetary value deals and stuff if something goes wrong you just expect a little bit of honesty from the person instead of yep. a lot of people can cover their tracks and try and make up excuses and that mm. sort of stuff you know just if, if some things happen in business all the time yep. i prefer to, i prefer to just you know put it on the table and just own it and say there's been a mistake that's happened down the line yeah we, we can deal with it and we can fix it we can move forward from it yep. it, it even comes down to, you know when you're doing sales with customers mm. that honesty from them they actually really appreciate instead of, you know making up excuses as to you know something's happened during shipment coming in etc yep. etc so authenticity honesty are two huge values for us mm. um in the business i think understanding exactly what a consumer wants is super important because if i'm thinking about even just like past experience recently maybe with us working with other companies and it's it's, it's been fucking brutal at different times a mm. lot of it's because one they they'll make some sort of mistake and then rather than just taking ownership of it they'll blame someone else yep. or it will just go around in this huge circle but the bottom mm. line is i just want what i paid for yeah and it's like for you it seems like for yourself you understand exactly what your consumer wants which is just the clothes yeah and if they don't get the clothes then they deserve the honesty of yeah why it happened absolutely yeah. um and, and, and it's, it's that transaction in it it's mm. you you want something for me and i want something in return that's yep. pretty much what it is if you can give me what i want but i can't give you what you want then there's been a breakdown in, in that transaction yeah and someone needs to take ownership of that and yep. that person if it's on our end needs to be us yeah we need to take ownership of that All so that, in terms of confidence to be authentic like to be yourself mm -hmm. is there anything that you think like springs to mind when it comes to like how you develop that kind of confidence to be yourself or it's that kind of cliche thing but just don't give a fuck what people say yeah you know you, you really need and in business especially when you're so out there in terms of putting yourself out there in content you'll know yourself social media can be a pretty toxic place sometimes and you can get a lot of negative comments and stuff you just need to really build a thick skin to that mm. and just kind of brush it off yeah. like it, like i don't know that person they don't know me they want mm. to make a a shitty comment on tiktok by all means bash on yeah. you know if that makes you feel better fine it's not i'm gonna go about my day anyway do you yeah. know what i mean yeah so building that sort of thick skin and that ability to be able to just laugh stuff off mm. and see it as you know have a bit of a joke about it rather than yeah. um rather than taking it to heart all the time yeah it, it, it goes a long way how do you say someone's never flexed that muscle before like never started to flex that muscle of not giving a fuck mm. what would be your advice to them to start working it i guess put yourself out there mm. get used to it that, yeah. like it's one of those things practice makes perfect right and you know yeah. if you're if you're starting to create social media and you're putting your face on on onto the videos and you're talking and you know if you see a negative comment that's fine do you know what i mean like you're going to feel shit about it maybe the first few times and i did as well don't get me wrong like when i started creating content on social media pages my face was in it and people are you know making shitty comments about x y and z it does it, like it does affect you to start with but the yeah. more the more you do it the more you begin to realize that person's never commented ever again i'm probably never going to meet that person that like that person's probably forgot about the comment they even put on the video do you know what i mean like they've moved on to being a dick to someone else like yeah. that's just naturally what they're going to be doing yeah. and then at the end of the day it's forgotten about mm. it didn't really have that much of an impact on you yeah do you know what i mean 100%. so that continuation of just keep pushing through it keep keep pushing through it you, you start you start to evolve into not that not give not giving a fuck sort of mentality yeah i think um like see the because i know for me when i started flexing that muscle it was from reading the subtle art of not giving a fuck by mark yeah. manson yeah and that book for me helped me 
because one of the things that I wanted to touch on with the values thing is that I feel like a lot of young entrepreneurs are maybe more naive when they first come into business and they'll um, conform to either a mentor's piece of advice or someone that they believe is further ahead than them yeah. and they'll start to do things their way rather than their own way and it's because they believe the other person knows better yeah. and also on your end when it comes to like honesty, uh, authenticity, like these are things that you've continued to basically have as core values that you don't compromise, right? When I read the sort of not giving a fuck, I very much had the kind of subtle nihilism, yeah. you're going to die anyways, who the fuck cares, man? Like just like, never mind in a decade, it's not going to matter. Like tomorrow, it's probably not going to matter. Yeah, I mean, see the thing, I see, see when I get shitty comments like that, I'm like, you have to re- look at the look at the actual landscape of it and going that's like that is below and me giving a fuck below what i'm having for my dinner tonight do you know what i mean (laughs) like that's where it ranks and and how much do i give a fuck yeah so if 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 it's gonna weigh on you that much then you just need to kind of you know push through it and Mm. find something else that's going to take your attention off of that shitty comment and keep pushing through it yeah i agree bro so on the values piece like see on that piece of me seeing probably a lot of other young entrepreneurs that are they'll they'll compromise or they'll be easily influenced mm. into another way of thinking and they won't really stand for anything and as a result of that they can't like they will just become a shadow of someone else and they'll just yeah. kind of develop values that probably aren't aligned with them and then they realize they're in line mm. that it's not and then they'll talk kind of back it seems like very early on in this journey you've obviously established authenticity honesty mm. and you stood by them why say i think we've kind of covered why but also i want to kind of unravel like how someone else that is just getting started can truly understand the core values that they should never compromise yeah i mean i I suppose the biggest thing for me to be able to solidify what they actually were is just writing them down Mm. and living by them you know if if it means you need to print it off on a piece of paper and stick it above your desk and so you look at it on the wall all the time Mm. i mean Andy from from the network has been great with me with you know helping me build out the notion stuff yeah. and the first thing I look at every day is the branding and the values of the business mm-hmm. every time I log on to my notion that's the first thing I see yeah. so I'm I'm reinforcing what I believe in mm-hmm. do you know what I mean yeah. and I'm I feel so strongly about the values that that we have behind the business that no one's no one's opinion or influence is going to change that like that's yeah. solidified in my brain so it's 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 not about other people convincing you what you should do. It's you need to convince yourself yeah. and you need to sort of reinforce that that's actually what you believe in. And once you believe in that vision so much, yeah. no one's going to change it. Yeah, I agree, bro. And I think, um, oh, so many different pieces I wanted to like pull, pull apart there. <laughs> um, I think being constantly reminded for, for a start, I, mean, I, I took that from, because I see like even some of the stories you share mm. um, of like, I think I seen you share one on, on Dana White as well, speaking about like, manifestation. Manifestation one. Yeah. Um and it seems like you're a very visual individual. You have a lot of things yeah. that you will whether it's you, like you said, draw it out, fucking stick it on the wall, have it in notion. These are all things that constantly remind you of them. How did your beliefs become so strong in those things that you keep like manifesting, writing down? Again, it, it come it comes back down to what I kind of touched on earlier. It's it's all about, you know, just living it and practice makes perfect you know like I, before i started business i was never really a big on manifestation and you know believing and all that kind of stuff but the more that i've kind of you know actually gave it a go and manifest it writing stuff down speaking stuff out loud actually the more i talk about my vision to people the more i talk about my 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 plan for the next five to ten years and beyond yeah. the more it's all starting to fall into place yeah. because I, i'm reinforcing it to myself Yep. And every day I'm working towards that goal, you know, mm-hmm. being able to speak something out to someone, yep. you're putting it out in, in, into the universe, you know what I mean? Like you're going to, it's going to happen because you're, you're, you're saying it's going to happen. Yep. And I attribute a lot of that to like Conor McGregor when he was up on the ranks. Like he always spoke about manifesting stuff where yep. he was always saying he's going to be the world champion. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And it all came true. Yep. Like it's, it's that similar thing where the more, I, the more I talk about, the end goal or where we're going to get to and the mini goals in between mm. it's going to happen because it can't not happen yeah you know like I get it, bro. everything's pulling in the same direction to get to there mm. so 
that's why I really like talking about that sort of stuff because it only reinforces it to myself that, that that's where we're going. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, mate, they'll generate a good amount of belief, maybe not as strong a belief, but they'll get pulled in other directions due to, like Hermosi speaks about it all the time, the women in the red dress, yeah. other different ideas. Have you had any, I'd imagine plenty of experiences like that, but any that stick out to you that you're like, something not necessarily catches your eye but something has brought to you an opportunity but because you're so strong on what it is that you believe in the direction that you're going it doesn't even distract you and mm. i feel when i speak to yeah so many other different like young entrepreneurs that are really in the first couple of years of their journey they will be set on something and mm. then they'll get an opportunity that's maybe higher leverage make more money impact more people which yeah. obviously looking at all of those things also it comes back to the actual goal that you're actually aiming for in the first place but it can be so easy to kind of get distracted it seems like you're so focused on activo and yeah i mean to be honest there's there's been a few things here and there but it never really got anything past the stage of just asking about it yeah because it's just not in alignment with where the the path that i'm going and I'm very much a, a believer in if it if it doesn't make sense if it's not going to benefit the journey that I'm on right now it, it's of no use to me. Yeah. Um. So th there has been you know business opportunities where people have got in touch about X Y and Z, but it's never been on my radar because the one thing that means the most to me is getting Activo to where it's going to go. Yeah. Um. And if it's not going to benefit us to boost us on that journey, then it's it's not for me. Yeah. Um. So there ha like I said, there has been opportunities, but not it's not the right timing for it yeah i understand mate. in terms of um challenges so far in, in like the first year mate anyone's that kind of stick out to you oh there's been so many challenges like it's not it's not been easy like it's it's like that i sent someone that iceberg analogy the other day because mm, they were asking yeah. about it it's like you see the tip of the iceberg hanging out hanging out the water yeah. and that's the success that everyone sees but no one sees the big massive iceberg underneath yeah. the water where you don't see the hard work the discipline the late nights you know yeah. the risk that you take you know the yeah. financial burden you put on yourself all that kind of stuff um it's it, it's been such a difficult journey from start to finish yeah. um there's there's not really been an a time where i've went this is easy mm. on the surface to people it probably looks like it's the easiest job in the world but in reality like the amount of time and effort and stress that you put yourself through just for that little nugget of success yeah is but it's worth it right i yeah. fucking love it like, it's like that little ping of that um because i see it on, on your stories regularly it's like that little label that comes through the the machine oh i see um, when those labels just start rattling out i'm like oh i love this man this <laughs> this game is amazing um yeah. but i mean i'm kind of going off on a tangent here but the the, the reality is for me the drive the main drive for me isn't even money mm. money means no like money's it is what it is money money's a byproduct of everything else yeah where the main thing that, that drives me is success. You know, that that ability to be able to say, I had fucking did that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I did that by myself. I took it from here and it's now here. Mm. That's mine. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's kind of that way where you watch, as a, as a dad, you watch your kid grow up and they're like 18, you let them off, go off on, on their own. You're like, that's my kid. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how I feel about it, where that, that urge for success to prove to myself that i could do it is kind of what gets me up in, in the morning and yeah. you know yeah money's great like business money and business is great but money's not like the main drive for it yeah um and i want to i want to empower people as well do you know what i mean yeah. like the empowerment of fashion can be huge and it's, it's something that's not really spoke about enough mm. it's not me trying to you know say you have to buy fashion all the time but yeah. you'll know yourself like if you're an active person and you get a new pair of running shoes what's the first thing you want to do with them run. you want to go out and run in them right <laughs> so that's what you want to do so it's that empowerment that you feel when you when you do get something new mm. um where it makes you feel better about yourself and you want to go yeah. and actually take part in an activity with the active wear that you buy yeah i'm the same like if i get a new t-shirt i want to go and win at a gym and see what it looks like when i'm lifting weights and stuff do you know what i mean yeah. so it's that how can how can we empower people to be active through the use of fashion yeah it's, it's, it's kind of kind of where we're at with the, the vision of it yeah um I yeah can resonate with that mate for sure because even if they're thinking about probably like the first i mean the last three years of like running young and lazy paid myself like fuck all the yeah. last like three years and as a result of that only now I'm actually starting to pay myself like a salary where i'd even be able to buy like myself shit yeah. as such yeah and knowing that um going to the gym regularly again over the last like four or five months knowing when you get a new tea 
and you know that it fits really nice. Makes and you're like, I can't wait to get in, mate, and just get a fucking pump and actually Aye. see how it looks. Aye. Um it, that 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 buzz you get is amazing, right? Yeah. Like um that's not to say, you know, you need to be buying clothes like all the yeah. time to, to make you feel that way, but you know, when you want to treat yourself to something new or you know, you hit a PB or I'm gonna go treat myself to a new a new tracksuit or whatever, do you know yeah. what I mean? Like that empowerment that you can feel and that confidence it gives yourself when you do get something new and you try it on, it looks good and you're like oh, feel pretty good about this yeah, man for sure man in terms of um back to the challenges is there any specific ones that stick out to you you were just like fuck me man this has been horror like you were just like in the trenches fucking trying to get through it yeah i mean that kind of the, the, the hardest part for me is you know trying to have a healthy balance between life outside of business and life inside of business and i still haven't mastered it yet like <laughs> i'm i'm very much a, such a driven person that the biggest challenge for me is knowing when able to call it a day mm. and go i've done enough for today yeah it's time to go home and relax yeah like i could be in my office from 6 a.m till 10 p.m every day and still find myself with stuff to do yeah um but as i'm as I'm kind of getting further into my entrepreneurial journey, I am getting better at being able to say, no, it's time to just call it a day and go do stuff. And, yep. you know, my mates want to go out for food at the weekend or, you know, if I want to make time to, to do something else with the family or whatnot, then yep. I, I have the ability to be able to do that. Mm. And I've always had that ability to be able to do that. It's just I've chose not to. It was yep. my choice to not do that because I was so driven and focused on that. Mm. And I think, um, like... I mean, on that piece, it's like every, every single young entrepreneur I speak to that's succeeding to some level, they have that kind of, whether you want to call it, like an insecurity of not doing enough. Like that is constantly yeah. like at the forefront. Oh, it's, it's that imposter syndrome, yeah. right? Like you, feel like, you feel like you're never doing enough. Yeah. And I, I probably struggle with that a lot where, yeah. you know, I always feel like everything I do in the business is never enough. Yeah one more hour, one more hour here, one more hour there, you know, oh, it's only six o'clock, I'll stay till seven, I'll do this, I'll do that. That's kind of that's, that's kind of where it's at, but it's those qualities that make someone really successful. Yeah, it's sure. that obsession with, you know, making sure that you can do as much as you possibly can. Yeah. Um, and that sacrifice of, you know, dedicating your entire life to something is such a great quality that, you know, it's people that have that quality, that obsession, so dedicated to something, that's the kind of people I want to surround myself with, yeah. which is part of the reason why I joined the network in the yeah. first place. You know, yeah. people that are like minded, that are so obsessed about their vision, about their goals, yeah. that's only going to rub off on you. Yeah, you yeah. Know? 100%. percent man. I feel like you, um, I feel like something that doesn't get spoken about enough with it is like the purpose that comes yeah. like, alongside it, where like you feel like if I'm thinking about 19 year old John prior to business going to like, like uni, yeah. um, like is there any chance I was springing out of bed at six? the thought process of fucking doing anything like yeah. uni related or even like games man it's like gaming was probably the only thing that i've like truly succeeded in at a really high level mm. but that's because like i couldn't stop playing it yeah so it's like the obsession the time and yeah. effort put into it yeah it's like translating that into business and you start to realize that you're playing something that i don't think people really like dial in on a lot man but i know Hermosi speaks about it like it is an infinite game i don't know and I, and I know he learned it from the val that like there is no there isn't really a fucking end goal with business like you no. just when you get in it and you realize the actual game itself you get so obsessed with like so many little fucking nuts and crannies and bolts yeah. that you you realize it's so so magical but when you piece them all together it's like you provide that said thing to someone else you get paid for it and that th that pay on the other end it's like the better you get at this thing the more you get on the other end yeah and the more you develop that comes from the time the effort the knowledge and yeah. it's fucking exciting man yeah like, honestly it's it's one of the like i say it's, it's one of the best things i've ever done if not mm. the best thing i've ever done to be honest with you yeah uh and do you know what I, I, i'll kind of say i'm glad i'd done it when i did it yeah because like you just said if i had started this journey at a, a younger version of myself i probably wouldn't have stuck it out yeah. I would have done it for six months, canned it, went back to the old life. Yeah. Um, I, I feel now in the past 12 months, I've became such a mature person that I'm I'm able to be able to evolve as a person. Whereas before I didn't want to evolve as a person, I thought I was the best version of myself, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm still not the best version of myself, but I'm constantly getting better day by day. 
What was old life like? Uh, just going out all the time. <laughs> just being a fucking nuisance, to be honest. Mm. Um, no, I mean, the thing was, I had no ambition. I yeah. was happy just going, doing my job, sitting, playing video games with my mates, going out at the weekend, and then rinse and repeat. Like, yeah. I had vir virtually... I had a life, but it wasn't really a life worth living. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that kind of rinse and repeat. There was no purpose. There was like no drive to get up in the morning. Yeah. Um, where I I would go to work, come home, eat, watch telly, eat shit, and go again and go yeah. again and go again. That's kind of that was kind of my life. Um, so now I, like I'm a way way more successful person in terms of my lifestyle. Yeah. You know, get up early, go to the gym before I go to work get into the office early, crack through a whole day of just smashing it out, yeah. get home, feel great about yourself, and then you go again, Yeah, you know? I remember when I watched, um, I think it was George Heaton from Represent doing a video with, um, I think it was Iman Gadzi, and he yeah. was coming out of the gym, and George was like, I could wake up at like 3.30, and as soon as I wake up, I think about all the exciting shit that I've got to do, yeah. and I can't go back to bed. Yeah, And it was like, I remember him saying that and thinking, like obviously there's going to be plenty of days where you don't have that right but it's like when you wake up and it's like for me the reason i was asking the questions about the values is you, when you start to build a business around your values and you lean into it quite heavily for me obviously starting why now it's quite clear that one of my values is people tribe like yeah. having people close to me and obviously i guess externally from a network perspective mm -hmm. like i'm fucking i'm all over that man yeah. like why i started the podcast and stuff like that but also internally knowing that like i'm in business with like Andy, Jack, yeah. um, Ollie as well. It's like these, when I think about how much I value those people and knowing that, like coming from the gaming background, yeah. it was all team. It's all team shit. You're, you're going into games together. You've got each other's back. You're communicating together. You go to an event. You play for a lot of money. You win. You turn around and it's like, first thing you do is you fist bump somebody or the first thing yeah. you hug them. And it's like, I feel like a lot of people when they go into business, man, they don't have that nor mm. um, create that. And I feel like it's something that, when you start to lean on the values perspective, you start to also lean quite heavily into it. And it's very clear when I looked at like that represent video of like George Heaton, it's like he's leaned so heavily into like the shit that he loves, man. Yeah. Like lifting, like doing the fucking like whether it's like I feel like when I watch his content, it's like high rocks type shit. Like yeah, just yeah. Doing, he's just doing mental shit all yeah. the time. And he's just leaning so heavily into that. And I feel like a lot of people just don't man they don't lean into the shit that they actually love and enjoy yeah um, for sure which is why I, enjoy, I liked what you said at the beginning in regards to just writing down the shit you're most passionate about yeah. and going cool it what one is most le like has the most leverage what is the thing that i'd be able to do over a longer time horizon and like actually making a business out of me it's fucking class man yeah i actually shared something on my in instagram story about that mm. um literally about two hours before i got here <laughs> it was a it was a video of a woman saying that you know if you you find out something you're truly passionate about and make a living from it, you'll you just you don't feel like you're working. Like yeah. every day is amazing. Yeah. That, that's the way I feel about it. Every day I feel like it's it's not even a job. Like yeah. I don't even feel like I work. Yeah. You know, I just I just feel like I go do stuff <laughs> and just build a business. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. But the, the, to go back to the challenges part, it's 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 not easy. Yeah. Like business isn't easy. Mm -hmm. Especially, you know, where you're navigating it by yourself and you're building something solely by yourself. Yeah. And again, it's part of the reason why it's, it's so good to have the network. You can lean on people that are on that same journey with you that yeah. are feeling the same stresses and anxiety and, you know, confusion and all those different emotions that come as part of being an entrepreneur yeah. that you, people can relate to you. Mm -hmm. um, which is kind of what I wanted most out of the network was yeah. I just wanted to feel like I wasn't alone. Because mm. it is such a lonely journey when you're building something by yourself. Yeah. Sure. Um but it's like I say, it's it's honestly like been the best thing that I've ever done. Yeah. For sure. In terms of um your old life, what was the is there a turning point that you like remember or attach the change to? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um well I mean I my family's had it pretty rough over the past 12 months. Mm. Um, so in just a year going past, we lost my sister, right? Okay. Which kind of made me change. Because, I mean, loss loss of a family member's tough, right? Yeah. Especially when it's a sibling rather than, you know, because you, 
you expect your grandparents to die. You expect at some point your parents are going to die. You know that's coming, but when it's a sibling, you, it, it hurts yeah. a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Um, so she, she passed in the November, but I kind of was like, you know what? She was she was like late thirty. She was, was like touching forty, and she, she passed away. Do you know what I mean? I was like, life's too fucking short, man. Mm. Like, what the fuck am I doing? I'm, I'm sat playing the PlayStation all the time, eating fucking Doritos. Like that's that's not a life worth living. I want to be able to, you know, get get to the stage where I might be at her age and look back and go, fucking hell, what what fucking what did I do there? That was amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like you want to get to that, you want to build a legacy, you want to build a legacy for your kids, your kids' kids and all and beyond that. Um so that that kind of that whole situation kind of changed my perspective on I need to do something, mm. you know? Um and going through all that grief and that, you know, that difficult time with my family kind of made me understand, you know what, I'm going to provide something for them that mm. they're never going to have to worry about anything ever again. Mm. And I mean, one of the, the promises I made when I first started my journey was I was going to buy my mum a house yeah. eventually. She's going to be bills free. She's just going to be living the life. She can go do whatever the fuck she wants. That's kind of, that's one of the main factors in the, why I'm working so hard is I want to provide a life for my family so that they don't have to worry about stuff like that. Mm. Um, and then kind of moving on from that, it, we had an, an even worse part thing happen when my dad also passed away three months later. Oh. So we lost my sister, then we lost my dad sort of within three months of each other. Was it four months? Yeah, so my sister died in November. Then my dad died in um, March um just before his uh 60th birthday which was again like a brutal experience to go through um for from the rest of my family i'm a quite a strong individual where i can handle that and i can kind of be able to cope as such um whereas a lot of my other family members really struggled with it you know my younger sister my mum I, I don't even know how my mum was feeling. I mean, losing your firstborn daughter and then losing your husband kind of so mm -hmm. so quick together, your life has literally just shattered right in front of you, right? Yep. And to to see your family go through that experience is, is pretty brutal. Um, it was rough. It was like one of the roughest times I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm so thankful I had the business at that moment in time. Mm -hmm. Because if I didn't have something to focus my energy on to kind of dig me out of that that hole of where I was at, I don't know where I would be right now. Like yeah. I don't know what path I would have went down. Because that amount of grief and struggle can it changes you as a person. Mm -hmm. And I've thankfully came out the other end of that change to be a much, much better person. Yeah. Whereas it could have the pendulum could have swung either way, I felt. Yeah. Where I could have went down a path of, you know, self destruction or self improvement and i've went down the self-improvement route which i'm so thankful for yeah um but it, it doesn't it doesn't come without its guilt i guess i do feel guilty a little bit where because of the business i probably wasn't as present as i could have been mm -hmm. where i felt like i was i was burying myself and stuff to do with work that i probably wasn't there enough mm -hmm. to support them and be there yeah. so that's something that i'm working through personally mm -hmm. that you know, I, it, is, it is what it is. That was kind of my coping mechanism at the time where I was just burying myself and stuff to do and I was just dealing with it in my own way where I would rather go to the office and get work done than sit in the house and feel sad. Have you ever spoken to your mum about it? We, we speak about it sometimes. We've not mm. had, we've not sat down and had like a one-to-one a -one conversation. We, we, we speak about it a lot, um, but we've not kind of aired everything out. Mm. Do you know what I mean? We've not had like a, a, a proper conversation about it. Yeah. Um, we're not really that 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 type of conversational people. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of just like move on with. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But yeah, that the past twelve months has has been pretty pretty brutal for the family. Yeah, yeah. Pretty brutal. But it's it shaped me and gave me that vision and that drive. Mm. It's kind of like that rocket booster that's kind of went, right, fucking let's go. Let's yeah. do it. Let's get after it. Yeah. Um, yeah. If I think about like, um, also firstly, like, sorry to hear that, I, mean, I literally oh, sorry, like, yeah. I didn't know that either, either yeah. prior to the, the episode and stuff like that, man. So it's, 
it's super fucking inspiring for a start mate but also so interesting like i think about like chris williamson speaks a lot about him and hermosis episodes for example they speak a lot about this kind of whether you want to call it like darkness whether you want to call it some sort of like this negative driving force that like is fucking pushing behind you that when i think about people that like i truly admire like andy's definitely one of them and andy um and he spoke about it on the podcast and like one at one many times with clients and stuff like that. He lost his mum mm. when he was, I think it was like 11 or 12. Um, and she was like late 30s, early 40s. And that was the thing that is like drove him yeah. where even like last night, man, since my text, like fucking quarter to 11 and he's laid out like this, we wanted to create this kind of um, super high ticket offer within like yeah. out with Young and Lazy sends me a text quarter to 11 full layout full process of how we're going to go and basically the, to- the to-do list to make it happen mm. and it's like he's doing that because he sees life differently to the majority of others yep. where time is like the the scarcest commodity to him where he can't just wait till tomorrow to do it yeah it's like he fucking hit the thought of thought process of how it's like he's 24 right now he might only have like an hour 16 years to, to live yep. if he was to compare it to his mum yep. And it's like when you start to really break it down, it's like I seen a video from um for enough you were speaking about Theo Vaughn's was it Theo Vaughn's podcast? Yeah, it was I. Um I seen a video of Dana White, not on that, but watched that pod and I seen a video of him afterwards and he was speaking about this Gary Brecker guy that's helping yep. him yep. like live longer and stuff like that. Um and he done his blood work. Mm. I don't know if you've seen like the actual results of his blood no, work. No, I've not seen it, no. So the Gary Brecker can however the fuck that he does it. Um can understand roughly to a month of when you're going to die based on your blood work and he like went through it with dana i don't know, and I know that you don't know if you want to know that no, i don't, <laughs> I don't know if i, I would don't know, know, if I know, I know my expiration date is <laughs> yeah, i know it's a bit fucking crazy bro yeah. but when he done it with dana um dana was like early 50s he was like if i've got like an hour like 20 30 years like class it was 10.2 or 10.4 yeah years that he had left and he was like I'm not even gonna live to like the average fucking life, man. Like I'm not even gonna like I'm I'm and but the reality of that is that's of natural causes, right? Yeah. Well so also the, Gary can help reverse, but it's yeah, like yeah. But in reality that, that ten point four years or whatever it was could easily be ten point four hours. Yeah. You know, you could yeah, walk yeah. out on the street and get smashed yeah. by a car and before yeah. you know it you're in hospital and then so as as much as it's great to be able to say that is the end point. Yeah. It might not be. Do you know mm. what I mean? That might not that yep. might not be your course. So it's it's kind of one of those things. And it is that cliche thing that people say is you've kind of got to live every day as as, as your last. Yeah. And that and there is a bit of an element to truth to that where just enjoy it. Enjoy the journey you're on. Every day is different. Every day you just get up and you just go and enjoy it. 100%, do you know what I mean? And that's kind of what I aim to do. I'm I'm quite an impulsive person at, at the best of times. Mm. But if there's something that I think I'm really gonna enjoy, I just go and do it. Do you think that like those series of events has had a positive impact on your willingness to take risk? Massively. Yeah. Massively. Like I was very much before a person that would take risks, but now I'm like, well, I want to risk it all. Yeah. I'm willing to put everything on the table and just go, let's roll the dice. Mm-hmm. Let's find out. And there is a lot to be said about entrepreneurship that you have to be willing to do that. Yeah. It's it's like that thing that I relate to Elon Musk with his two companies, right? Where he was running out of money. He only had 30 million in the bank, whatever it was. And both of his companies were dying and he had to make a choice, one or the other. And he took the, the gamble to split the money and go with both. Yeah. And thankfully, both of them survived. But mm. that could he could have easily have lost it all at that point where he could have definitely kept one and lost the other, yeah. but split it and could have lost both mm. and then kept both. So that, that was like the biggest roll of the dice for him and I, I i would probably do the same thing if i was in his shoes i'd be like let's roll the dice and find out what happens yeah risks don't always pay off right yeah. and that and that's why it is a risk but with no risk comes no reward right yeah so every day i'm willing to kind of gamble at all mm. every day i'm fucking willing to go get bankrupt <laughs> to make sure that the dream works right so <laughs> it's one of those yeah. things but yeah i'm I'm a, I'm a big i'm big on taking risks mm. but as I'm getting more mature, it's more about calculated risks as well. You need yeah. to kind of attribute a lot of, you know, 
what what are the risks instead yeah. of just taking the punt at it? Do you know what I mean? Like what what are the outcomes of taking this risk? Yeah. Prior to losing your mum and your sister, were you quite risk heavy then as well, or is it like just do you feel like that series of events was what it was? I mean. The risks I was taking were probably not the same risks I was taking now. Yeah. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Because my journey's different, my yeah. life's different. So I would always take risks, but yeah. I was never, you know, taking big leaps of faith like what I am just now mm. in my entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. Um, But I would definitely say that now I've kind of got that fuck it mentality where I'm like, oh, let's, let's, let's do it. Mm. You know what I mean? Let's just, let's just put the balls to the wall and just figure it out. Yeah. You know, and I always attribute it to the fact that you know what, like the best entrepreneurs could lose a hundred million and get it back. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's there's nothing that I couldn't get back that I have just now. So, is it that much of a risk when you can get it back? <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of the way I think about it, right? Yeah. Which is a very empowering way to think about it. I also think that you, um, because as we were talking about the women in the red dress, my mind naturally kind of wanders off to like possibilities of where say it's like Hermosi for example with Jim Launch right it was like it got to, to a stage where he like sold it for like 40 or sold a majority stake of like 46 million or whatever in it uh, and then it went into like acquisition.com and then all of those fucking things that he developed all yeah. those character traits uh, character traits and skills he was then able to put it in acquisition.com and it's like mm -hmm. with yourself it's like there is so many skills and character traits you're going to be de developing that like who fucking knows what you could go into and create a super high leverage like yeah. opportunity where like yeah i mean one one thing that i've learned from that whole situation is i am fucking the most resilient version mm. of me that i've ever been like yeah. i almost feel now that like nothing could that anything could throw at me is gonna phase me mm. you know I, i've literally like i said this to my mates when it happened i was like i literally fucking stared the devil in the eyes and was like you can't fucking do fuck all to me now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, there, there's nothing that could happen to me now mm. that I'm like, I'll feel that bad about it because I've been in that place, that such a dark place in, in my own head yeah. that, well, we didn't do enough sales today. Mm. Whoop do you fucking do? Right, we'll just, we'll move on to tomorrow and we'll, do, we'll go again. Do you know what I mean? That, that kind of thing, like the big issues that day-to-day pe -day people have that they make a big deal out of, I'm like, it's not that big a deal, mm. you know? Does the um, does that kind of like darkness ever like creep back in? No, no, no. It, you just use it as fuel. Yeah, use it as fuel. Do you know, mm. it's it's not so much darkness anymore. Like I kind of got out out of that stage of yeah. feeling that way. It's 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 now more so about you know using using that that feeling because I get with my dad every day and stuff. Do you know what I mean? So it's using that kind of thoughts and feelings that you have and being able to turn that into something good mm. you know and again it comes back to what i said having that vision of providing something for someone and making sure that you do everything you can to get there to make sure you give that person what you want yeah that's that's kind of where the drive comes from 100 percent. you yeah. know see when it comes to um the first time i, I guess i seen you like be willing to take a risk was when we spoke about like the ibiza giveaway yeah now i thought yeah, i loved it mate because it was something that like when if, you're not, if you're not done it yet, do it. <laughs> yeah. If you're not went on like Table Sports on Instagram and not entered in the giveaway, there is a chance to win. There's your chance, 14th of January. <laughs> That's when it finishes. <laughs> that giveaway is something that I fucking love, man, for, for many reasons, but one that you are willing to do something like that, but in a, such a fucking logical and methodical way as well, right, yep. where people don't realise, right, that they could go and spend... Like we were speaking about your ad spend before, you yeah. can always speak about the numbers of the, like your yeah, ads spend. Yeah, cool yeah. Like you're spending like three and a half grand a month just now on on ads, right? Like people would be barely like fucking willing to put five hundred to a grand into something, right? Yeah. And be like, I don't know if it doesn't work, it sounds right. But also, when people get over that hurdle and they start maybe doing something like ads, or they start doing different marketing campaigns, yeah. they'll go and pay a company like thousand to like three thousand pound a month to fucking run it up. Mm. When you really break down like the Ibiza shit, it's like, yes, it's a lot of money, but it's also the way that you calculated and walked through the actual decision to do it. Yeah. It made so much fucking sense, mate. Yeah. And you didn't even bat an eyelid the fact that you're going to be sending like, a couple away to Ibiza for however many days, yeah. cover the full hotel, flights, full shebang. It just made sense. Yeah. It made sense to me in my head about, 
I'm, I, I can be very analytical and methodical as to some decisions that we make, but at the same time, I can be very impulsive with some decisions that I make, but um, I sometimes make decisions and justify why I made the decision after, and it turns out to be the right decision. <laughs> but with with the Ibiza thing, I knew I wanted to do something like that that was a little bit more out of the box that you don't see very often from other businesses within the industry. Mm. Um, I suppose I'll probably talk a little bit about why why I done it and yeah, kind of the, the reasons behind it. So with being kind of an active wear page, a lot of our sort of demographic of customers are those of people that like to go to Ibiza as a party holiday. Yeah. Um, I mean, the majority of our customers are kind of 18 to 35 young males that are at that stage where, you know, they like going to Ibiza with their mates and, you know, a lot of them go multiple times a year. I'm I'm of that demographic as well. I love going to fucking Ibiza. It's amazing. Um, so it it made sense that I wanted to give back something to that that group of people that have helped us be so successful so quickly. That it, it's something for them. It's not something for me. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I'm giving it back to them, and whoever the lucky winner is going to be is going to have a great fucking time. I'm sure of it. Mm. Um, but also more a little bit deeper than that where right now we only do menswear mm. so i've been very methodical in why i've done this obviously a lot of active wear pages do do giveaways you know that might be you know store credit you get a gift card you will give away x amount of clothes all that sort of stuff but it's always men's stuff right yeah with a with an ibiza giveaway it's there's there's no sex to it there's no you need to be a male to enter this yeah. you can be of any gender that you choose to identify with because everyone just loves Ibiza because it's a place to go. Yeah. And the reason the reason why I've done that is because our plan for Q1 next year is we're going to expand into women's wear as well. Mm. So the more noise I can create from women that are actually following the social media pages, when we launch that, I've already built a platform of people that I can target it to straight away yeah. that will potentially become a customer instantly. So we've already built like a mini base of a customer base as such, I guess, um, that we can tap into without actually having to do anything. Mm. You know, I love it. Man. Um, so and so far the plan's working. Where before our social media following on our Instagram page was like ninety percent male, ten percent female, where the pendulum is swinging a little bit, we we are kind of getting towards like a seventy thirty split. Yeah. Because because of you know. It's an untapped market for us mm. as such where um, we didn't really have many females that followed us. Yep. Only really the ones that would like to buy activewear for their other half. Yeah, I was going to say that to be fair. That's kind of, we, yeah. do get, we do get an awful lot of orders from females, but it is, you know, someone's mum maybe buying them something for Christmas or someone's girlfriend buying them something because they've seen that they might like yeah. it. But the idea will be we want those people to be able to be in, empowered by the women's wear as well. Yeah, And, you know, Active wear for women is huge. I mean, mm. look at brands like Gymshark. It's like one of the biggest businesses in the world. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where women, like I can't go into any gym in the UK without seeing at least one girl wear a, wearing a Gymshark set. Yeah. You're probably the same. Yeah, for sure. So there is a level of empowerment that I want to give females as well, not just cap it off to males. Yeah. Um, so it is one of the biggest factors of my decision making as to why we chose to do the Ibiza giveaway 100% man. and actually just as you were speaking through it when you said the partners thing I thought pendulum starts swinging like females start following even if you don't have female shit just now they'll be thinking Christmas that's that's the idea gifts right? that's the idea so. and again the reason why we launched it now is because it gives us reach and exposure during the busiest time of the year mm. which know? is when most people will get complacent so thinking they're going to I've, get I've covered Black Friday, the Christmas sales, and the January sales, yeah. all in one giveaway. Yeah. So the exposure is going to stay by people sharing our page throughout the entire 12, 10 to 12 week window yeah. of the busiest time of the year. Mm -hmm. Made absolute sense to do that. Rather than wait till January and launch it for someone look excited to go for the summer, it makes sense to do it now because yeah. the exposure comes now where we need it. 100%, man. In terms of, um, I guess, the the ins and outs of the business at the moment like <clears throat> i'm always interested like when i went and met um yanni who also introduced you to yeah like going and seeing his operation and stuff like that i was so curious about um like on your end like 
how much like worth of stock do you have? I don't know why I fucking don't feel like going and rob your offers don't or something. Don't say too much. <laughs> get, <laughs> my, uh, get my office emptied. Yeah. Um, a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Um, um, I won't. I won't put a number on it, but we've built up um, like a huge amount of stock over the past six months. I mean, when I launched the website, we started with around thirty k stock. Mm. which I thought was a good number to start a website with. Fucking hundred yeah. percent. And that, that's that's sort of end consumer price, right? That's yeah. not cost price, but yeah. end consumer price. And then over the course of the past, you know, four or five months, it's everything's been about reinvestment back into the business. Yeah. It's just like what you kind of touched on earlier with yourself. You were paying yourself peanuts. Yeah. I'm still paying myself peanuts. Like I'm paying myself enough to get by. Yeah. And... Every, everything else profit wise just gets smashed back into the business because we're a scale and growing business yeah. and if I start pulling out big money to pay myself so I can go and get a nice flashy car or go on a nice lavish holiday yeah. it, it's only detrimental to the longevity of the company mm. so it, it makes more sense for me to reinvest it and actually build and scale so like we spoke about before we started you know upgrading content yeah getting bigger office space, employing people, all these things that are, are beneficial to the business yep. is what is going to take priority for the next 12 to 24 months. 100%, man. And what's, um, I guess from like a content perspective, obviously you're, you're working with, um, with with Jude, who I'm trying to get him on the podcast for quite some time. He's very he adamant. On, man, I know. He's such he a fucking well, <laughs> he's such a well-spoken man. Like he is, he's so articulate, man. He'd be fucking incredible. Know, but would be great. Um, obviously working with him you're, you're planning on bringing out quite quite a lot of content is there anything in there that you want to talk about in terms of what's on the horizons I mean we're, we're very much in the, the infancy of, of what, what we're going to do but I, the idea between myself and the partnership with Jude is going to be we want to do more in terms of building a brand in 2024 um, we want people to be able to see the Activo logo and instantly recognize it as a brand that yeah. they love. Mm. Um, so we're going to go very content heavy in 2024 as to how do we market ourselves as a brand yeah. within the industry. Yeah. Um, so we have a vision next year of kind of what that's going to look like. But to start with, it's, it's going to be a little bit more of professionally short content in terms of m models wearing the stuff. Yeah. getting pictures on the website that you know instead of it just being a stock photo it's going to be a photo of someone wearing the items you yeah. know which in turn is going to give a completely different dynamic to the business yeah I, I keep saying to people when i'm speaking about it the business that finishes 2023 and the business that finishes 2024 are going to be completely different yeah the 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 scale and the the brand is going to be huge yeah um, I feel like 2024 is going to be a huge year for us. Mm. Um, we're we're, we're, we're going to keep reaching new heights month on month. Yeah. Um, and I've got some really big aspirations and some big goals for the company next year. For sure, mate. See, in terms of um, getting to this point, because we don't, don't really touch on it, to be fair, the, um, like the marketing strategy to, to start with, it was primarily like what, TikTok? Like Just going through social media. Socials, heavy. yeah. yeah. It was all from from the start of once we and got Activo set up. It was all through organic stuff. Yeah, and then obviously we moved into the paid side of it. Yeah, and we're absolutely smashing it on the the paid ad side of it. Yeah. Shout out to Daily Media Limited, by the way. Those guys are fucking killing it for me. Like honestly, you're gonna if, get so many inbound leads oh, off if, the back. Of if, you're, if you're a business that wants to scale quickly, Daily Daily Media, the two boys are fucking killing it, man. Love it. Um, but I so we're, we're doing so well on the paid ads through Meta that we've almost forgotten about the organic stuff. Mm. So the idea was is that if we can get Jude involved yeah. through the use of organic content, it's going to uplift the sales through that mm. as well as through the paid ads. So those two things are going to keep rising together. Yeah. And by those two things rising, we're creating a brand. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of the thought process because I, because the, the sales were flowing so much from the paid ads yeah. that kind of you get that tunnel vision of focusing your priority on it because that, that's where the money's coming from right yeah but i also need money to be coming from everywhere not just from one stream yeah so 
by having Jude on board and getting some really amazing content shot, it, that it, we can push that organically. Yeah. You know? 100%, mate. And I think it's something that, um, I think we, sp- we spoke about it in the car just before as well. Like, see, when you, see, when you deliver such a good fucking service, yeah. which obviously naturally compounds word of mouth, and then you add in these other streams yeah. that generate more eyes, yeah. the compound effect that comes off the back of that is just something that's not, it's not often spoken about enough, especially when, like, even though, like, I can't, still can't believe like you started a year ago, mate, because you've so much of what you developed in a year is, is incredible. But when I think about so many businesses that get started that maybe don't know how to market, don't know how to get in front of people, right? And they, but they're they're chasing that. They're yeah. chasing that little, oh, why get more in front of more people? But their service is fucking shit. Yeah. Or they don't even care about their consumer or like all of those things. Yeah. And they don't realize that if they get in front of more eyes right then, then more people are going to know about their service at the stage that they're probably like, going to be least happy with in yeah. terms of the, the actual level of service whereas obviously speaking about at the very beginning in regards to honesty true values to you that are, that are so important it's very clear that the core values you embody are things that are going to result in you going above and beyond for consumers yeah. that means that paid ads organic amazing word of mouth like yeah it's, it's fucking, they're all pulling in one direction yeah. and, and that's fucking global takeover <laughs> yeah that's for sure mate. um yeah for sure um so, like I say, twenty twenty four is it's gonna the business is gonna have a different dynamic. Yeah, in ter- the bit. I can't wait to see what the, what it actually looks like, mate. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, just because I just think it's an interesting question, what is the thing that you love most about business that other people maybe don't talk about enough? Um, that's a good question. You know, what do I love about it? I treat it like a big game, man. Like mm. it's, I, I, I might sound weird when I say that, but like that, it's the thrill of the chase of getting better and getting bigger, mm. and you know, seeing success come through. I mean, I can only attribute it to it's. It's a good thing having hindsight because I can look back at when we first launched the website versus now. Yeah. I mean, I think our first month on the website we did like three and a half grand in sales. Yeah. And now we're doing like over ten x that. Mm. And and just just the space of a few months, and when you look back and you go, how did I get from there to there? It's like it's like it's just disappeared, right? Yeah. That thrill and that chase of building something and being able to document and look back at the way you've built it and where it, the trajectory that it's still continuing in. Yeah. It's it's amazing to be able to do that and go back Absolutely. and go. Uh, there was there was a time where I was happy with making a hundred pound in sales a day. Yeah. Now I'd I'd be raging if I didn't do it an hour. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you kind of you kind of get to that stage yeah. where, it, or that perspective of the journey where you came from mm. and the journey where you're going. That if if we can do this much in such a little t- amount of time, it excites me to see where we're going to be in you know twelve twenty four months. Hundred percent, mate. I think when you start to because you said that you you kind of gamed and stuff when you were like, just like working a normal job and stuff yeah. like that. But people don't realize that like when it comes to the gaming side of things it becomes so addictive because there's a constant feedback loop of how good you are yeah. slash how like you're progressing through levels if you're doing yeah. solo shit you're playing against others you're getting constant feedback of you being better than them yeah. there's a constant scoreboard in play and i feel like when you start to treat business like a game and like the money just becomes a scoreboard and you're just doing like cooler and cooler shit and yeah. then the scoreboard changes all together you're playing a completely different game than what you were before yeah it's such a fucking like it's thrilling experience. a fun thing about it is the creativity that comes from it yeah like i have a blank canvas as to what i can do mm. every day like i have any anything i want to do within the business i can do it like i am in c- complete control of what happens on a day-to-day basis and that's fun right mm. that creativity of it i agree bro see when it comes to the end goal because i know we spoke about we spoke about this when you first came into y l yeah I'll share the email that you sent me okay. when when I fired over Daniel's <laughs> proposal um, for us to start working together. His reply was, um, let's make it TiVo the first billion pound company to exist within y and um, Do you want to unravel the, the goal, what it is that you want to achieve all wrong? Well, at current present where the vision stands is, I can, I'll, I'll break it down into short term, mid term, long term, because I, I like to kind of have these in, intermittent goals where I can 
go towards something. So I suppose within the next five years, I want to solidify ourselves as one of the leading retailers of all kinds of activewear yep. within within the UK. Um, whether that be it purely online or brick and mortar, we do ha- I do have some plans within within that time frame to be able to you know start opening stores. Yeah. Um, it's just finding the right opportunity and the right time to be able to to get that done. But I, I don't want to jump the gun too early on that and be too impulsive and have have it have a detrimental effect to the business rather than it, yeah. it makes the business better. Um, so within the next five years, ideally, I want I want to be a leading retailer. Mm. That it's, it's it's one of those things that I attribute it to that people don't even need to see your content to come and buy from you because mm. you're the first thing they think about when they want to buy something new. Yeah. I'll go and see what new they what they have in stock. Once mm. once you've got someone doing that on a regular basis, yeah. you've acquired that customer for life. Yeah. The lifetime value of that customer is huge. You're not having to pay for their click. Yeah. You're getting their click for free. Mm. Um, so if if I can do that across all of my customers all the time mm. and build a nationwide brand that's everywhere all the time that people love yeah. within within the short term, I'll, I'd be super happy. Mm. If that rolls into longer term, yeah. then by all means, but we're, we're still on the same trajectory to meet that. And then kind of going beyond that, like I said, it touched on um, with like the brick and mortar stuff, I'd love to have stores everywhere. I want to have that distribution network of stores and be able to provide customers that in-person Activo experience rather than just an online experience. Mm. There's something to be said about going being able to go into a shop and being provided some really amazing customer service. Um, And, you know, people love going in as much as people don't do it as much in this day and age. People actually love going into shops. I love going into shops. I love shopping, right? Even if it's food shopping, I love going to Tesco and buying whatever I can, right? (laughs) Um, but people people do like to go into shops and try things on and see it in person. Yeah. However, I don't know what the lie of the land's going to look like in years to come with, you know, virtual reality. Right? Yeah. They're probably going to be software at some point. You stick on a VR headset and you can try on the outfit yeah. on, in VR, right? So it's it's coming eventually probably, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of that's kind of where the vision will be. And then beyond that, I would like to start to, you know, continent by continent starting to build a brand in yeah. each of these continents so I, I, the, the most the one that makes sense would be the european market first yeah again i played the game very very smart with the name of the brand yeah um i'll teach you some spanish if you want right? <laughs> me, bro, me. um so activo means active in spanish oh yeah Love with a c not a k but you get the gist yeah. of it right and i deliberately done that because it gives me already a a relatable platform when we do move into the the European market eventually, yeah. that it's an, a name that resonates with them, mm. that makes sense. Um, so if it means we go into Spain first when you took over Spain with your yeah, business, yeah, yeah. Um, or, 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 and then begin to begin to expand from there. Yeah. And you know, once once you're in multiple continents and you have stores, you have an online presence in all these places you are going to be a billion pound company yeah like it's probably harder to not be than it is to be yeah um so then and then we just go beyond and then we just see how much of the world we can cover and how much of a difference we can make to people across the world you know if you're uh, special when you're teaching me spanish do you know what i mean i know (laughs) (laughs) you'll know activa you won't forget um so that that's that's kind of where i'm at but you know if 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 as a business, we we can empower as many people throughout the, the globe as we can to be active. Yep. I'm I'm a huge advocate for people actually being active, mm-hmm. um, and it doesn't necessarily mean everyone needs to be a professional sports person or a bodybuilder or whatever. Yeah, just going out a walk with your mates is enough. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That 20, 30 minute walk, the difference in your mental well being from doing something like yep. that just makes such a difference. Hundred percent, man. What do you feel like are going to be the the catalyst over the next couple of years for you making this happen? Bringing in the right people. Mm. People. Yeah. Having the right people surround, surrounding me is going to be one of the biggest decisions I'll have to make for the business. Yeah. Um, I mean, you'll know yourself when you brought Andy in yep. that he's propelled your business massively since since he, he joined the team. Yeah. I'm going to want to have that same effect where I can kind of bring in someone that 
will will have a partnership role at some point that yeah. can be that sort of enforcer type role where they just go and get shit done. Yeah. And they align it with the vision that you have mm. and they just go out there and just fucking get after it <laughs> and make make it happen. Yeah. I need to build an army of people that are the best people in the country that, that will build a mm. brand, that will build a business. 100%. Because ultimately at some point I'm going to reach a ceiling of how much I can physically do myself. Yeah. I'm probably pretty close to it, to be honest. Like I feel like I'm kind of getting to that stage of I'm not going to be able to give much more than what I'm giving just now. Like yeah. I've reached that ceiling of energy. Um, and I need to make a call before I hit the ceiling and take a bounce back off the ceiling and you know your energy level start to dip because you are like at that you're, yeah. you can't give anymore yeah um so to build an army to go to fucking war yeah. is kind of kind of where i where i want to be a, a, a company full of warriors that will fucking fight for the brand and actually build it from the ground up fucking love that bit. so over the course of the next 12 months there's going to be some real good opportunities to work for activo Tell you what, mate, fucking incredible business model would just be fucking duplicating a bunch of Andes and just fucking plot, Yo, plot F, F, F only, mate. F only. <laughs> I would buy them all, mate. I would buy them all. Just, 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 just put a number on a piece of paper, I'll sign it off. Bro, I get so many messages from even fucking like Mick Garrity, I think it was on Wednesday. Yeah. He was like, uh, you got so fucking lucky with Andy, mate. You know that? And I was yeah. like, I know, mate. I don't you, you, get they, don't, they don't come around very often, but. I don't know. Um, you know, if I could have an Andy where I could just hand over the reins of being able to just get shit done yeah. and just leave me to build a business and build a vision and, you know, get yeah. get so many th more things done. Um, you do some Star Wars shit, mate, and just start cloning, man. I wish I could, honestly. <laughs> I wish I could clone about 30 of myself. That would be the best thing I could do. But um, yeah. that's... Yeah, I mean, there, there's going to be some real good opportunities, you know, and if there's anyone out there that feels that they could make a difference to building a business that's it's going to it's gonna really propel in the next few years, you're going to want to get on board now before before the spaceship starts going to the moon. You know? Try to learn how to contact you. Yeah. Try to learn how to, how to contact you. Yeah, so you. you can get us through Activo Sports on yeah. our Instagram, Facebook, um, email activosportsuk at gmail.com. If you so wish to, you can get me on my personal, Daniel Luby on Instagram, Facebook, just give me a shout. If you feel like you've got something to give, um, there's always a conversation to be had. Love it, mate. I've got one more question just to just to ask you before before we round up. Um the because I feel like when this this question for me is always something that I feel like sparks an idea or a thought that I feel like if I share with someone else it will always provide a lot of value. Yeah. What do you feel like has been the biggest lesson you've learned from someone that's been further ahead than you? Mm. That's a good question, you know. I suppose it's like you you never stop learning, mm. you know. I I I yes, it's, it's a lot of people find it find it hard when they do see a bit of success that they feel like they're the big dog. Yeah, you know. But I always attribute it to, I can't remember where I, where I heard this quote or I heard someone say it, I can't remember for life me where it came from, but always try and be the least smartest person in the room, yep. you know? And I really do agree with that, yep. where a lot of lessons that people have taught me is try and be the least smartest person in the room because yep. you're always going to find value in what people are talking about. Yep. So if you can get into rooms where you're full of smart people, mm. you're going to come out with some stuff that you didn't know before. 100%. Um, so for me, you know, every day I'm learning more. Every day I'm trying to be better, yep. you know. Some some days isn't a great day, you know. Mm. It's okay not to have a bad day, but some days aren't a great day. But, you know, over the over the course of a year span, yep. the the business and myself are different different entities entirely. Yep. Um, and that's purely because I've just allowed myself to be open to you know, feedback, open to learning, mm. open to, you know, different ideas that people may have. Yep. Everyone has an opinion and, you know, whether you like it or you don't, there's probably some truth in some of it. Yep. You know, you just need to read between the lines sometimes. 100% mate. I fucking love that, bro. Well, incredible episode. Mate. Nice. I like, uh, bro, nice. see when I looked at my watch, mate, I seen it we're like 55 minutes in, about 25 minutes ago, <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, 
a lot of what I've had plans we didn't even get the chance to really go through mate so I think we'll need to do like a part two at some yeah, point yeah we can you can do that um, but honestly mate it's been, it's been fucking class like some easy, really man. really fucking raw shit as well mate which I feel like people are able to one relate to but take a lot away, f- away yeah, from and there'll sure. be people on a, on a similar journey mate so firstly thank you for coming on brother Appreciate honestly it, it's been class Appreciate. all the socials obviously you listed them out already where people can find yeah yourself so if you don't follow us get us followed up on the socials yeah anything that you feel you've got value to the business give us a shout for sure we're always open to a conversation love it mate well hi if you're on youtube trips be sure to subscribe we have episodes rolling out at the moment fortnightly but we're making a massive aggressive push daniel's the first of six episodes that we've got booked in a shoot between now and the end of the year got so many guests lined up for afterwards as well man so we're going to be going ham on providing you guys with as many journeys insights value that can be to other young entrepreneurs man so be sure to subscribe for more if you're on spotify follow i think it is on i on spotify drop a follow and yeah paul thanks as always brother and yeah amazing episode man nice one